This video proves that all existing growth theory is only accounting. And this growth accounting result is dismal. This is Harold Dormer's growth theory. When saving is greater than depreciation, there is a growth. Divide both sides by K to obtain the growth rate, where C is the output capital ratio. If C is constant, output also grows at the same rate. This is Solo's growth theory. When saving is equal to the capital needed to cover depreciation and population growth, K dot is equal to zero. K dot being zero means that per capita capital has zero growth rate. But it also means that both total capital and total population grow at some same rate. And if it is produced by a constant return to scale function, total output also grows at that rate. In essence, Harold Doma and Soro used their formation functions only to state their position. Then they dropped such functions and turned to the production function to count the growth percentage. Hence, at the most, their models can be called growth accounting, not growth economics. But even their accounting result is this small. When part of the output growth is used up by the input, there is not much net growth left. For example, if alpha plus beta is equal to 1, a 1% 1 increase of K in L will result in 1% increase of Y. Net growth is zero. If beta, if alpha plus beta is less than one, a one percent increase of K and L will result in less than one percent increase of Y. Net growth is negative. Hence, growth accounting is even this small. Indeed, Thomas Malthus had met exactly such a puzzle. When the worldly production function is dismal, some economies sought salvation from some supernatural one, like one with increasing returns to scale. Then other plus beta being greater than one may have positive net growth. But such practice only confirms that all existing growth theories are accounting. Growth economies have not changed much since Malthus' time.